Mother? Yes, dear. What is it now? Where do white elephants go to die? Beverly Hills. You win the Bible. Definition. Beverly Hills, a city of 750 psychiatrists, 35,000 people, and 1,000 lost golf balls. My son, the corpse. I'm not dead yet. I'm dying. Dead? Dying? What's the difference? There's a difference. Would you believe till he was 12 he was an angel? Never talk back to me? I'm dying. See? The way he talks to his mother? <laughs> Children. <laughs> well, good luck and God bless them, the little freaks. <laughs> Still, it makes you wonder, though. I mean, the way we suffer to raise them without any dents or kinks or bruises. And then this one kills himself like that. Bingo, down the drain. Doesn't even leave a note to stop the milk. Why, baby, why? What the heck were you thinking about? It's not normal. Oh. It, don't you turn your back on me. I'm dying. Oh, others, how we suffer. Because we love so much, we suffer. His father ran away when he was just a baby to Tierra del Fuego with a lady doctor. I think a Peruvian. She practiced in the same building when we lived in the Bronx. All the time they were meeting, he said she was treating him for warts. <laughs> Never saw one wart. Never even saw a pimple, now that I think of it. Ah, oh, well... Never mind your father. I'm the one. I'm the one who made you, Eddie, me. Without me, you'd be dying in some flop house instead of this beautiful, elegant mansion. In Beverly Hills. In Beverly Hills. When he was a baby, I worked two jobs. I scrubbed floors in an office building all night to keep him in diapers. Seven years just to keep him in diapers. Seven long years. He was what you call a late bloomer. I scrubbed floors until my knuckles looked like knees for him, for Eddie, and I saved every nickel. And then when he was 20, I started him out in a little business. And look at him now. He owns a big department store in Watts, mansion, membership in the country club. And what are the thanks I get? My big reward? <laughs> he swallows sleeping pills. I didn't raise my son to be a suicide, you loafer. Sit up straight. I'm dying. Heartache. When he was a baby, he never talked back to me. This is kind of symbolic. Is that the drill? Or is that portrait really talking? Ask your father. Glad you raised the question, yes. I believe the poor chap's dying from a surfeit of sleeping pills and other pernicious settlements, notably the water, which he used to swallow them with. Now, what we are witnessing now on the silken screen is all transpiring inside his cerebellum. Post-hypnoticus calcinorum hallucinocitus, I believe it's called. Rather common phenomenon, yeah. Do you mind if we talk a bit while you're dying? Insight, stories of spiritual conflict in the 20th century.
insight. We have all sinned, some more, some less grievously. That's what Seneca, the great Roman sage, said. Unfortunately, sin is part of the human condition. I have abused my freedom, you have abused yours. And because we have, we feel guilty. Guilt is not a pleasant emotion, but it is a healthy one, for it's the natural consequence of sin. It's nature's way of saying to us, you're not acting in accordance with your dignity. You're not treating other people as you should. To feel guilt when you have not sinned is neurotic. But to feel guilt when you have sinned is the sign of a spiritually and psychologically healthy person. But what do we do with guilt? How do we handle it? Do we try to turn it off? Do we try to escape from it by denying responsibility for what we've done? Or do we face up to the guilt, accepting the consequences of our actions? If we do, can sin be forgiven? Can guilt be assuaged? Look, I don't know whether you're real or just another illusion, but I'm gonna have to ask you not to do that anymore on account of I'm dying. Now, what is it you want? Man, I want me a refund. You're an illusion. Man, I'm real. You bet I'm real. I'm the realest thing in your life. Okay. Now, what about that refund? For what? This suit. What suit? Man, how many suits am I wearing? How do I know how many? You could be a looter. I really needed that. Look, I'm dying. Man, throws this suit. This suit here that I bought from your store down around my neighborhood for 96 balloons. It kind of looks right now like it's going on a diet and giving up smoking and was made in Russia and had an open heart operation all at once. Man, I ain't never seen no suit like this. This suit is Watts, made of thread. If this suit had a brain, I swear I'd mercy kill it. No refunds. Pay the two dollars. My mother. How do, ma'am? Eddie. Eddie. I'm listening, mother. I'm listening. Heartache. Take a look at the original odd couple, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Say, hey, mother, why don't you tell them the name of your favorite novel, huh? Don't get fresh. Now watch it. Isn't it I Remember Mama by Oedipus Rex? Heartache. Great old gal. Great, I mean it. If you ever come looting, though, take her. I mean, if you're looting right here in the neighborhood, she's worth running two or three minutes out of your way for. She's more than worth it. Laughs galore. What am I talking about? That's my mother. I love my mother. I've never hated my mother. I have never hated my mother. <laughs> Now, let's get back to the suit. Look, I said no refunds. Eddie, will you get rid of that? Have you met my mother? Get rid of him. Pay the two dollars and get rid of the rotten scum. Mother, will you be quiet? I'm trying to die. Well, I'm just trying to help you. Mother, will you please? I'd rather do it myself. Children. Understand it. What is going on here? What am I doing walking around? I'm supposed to be dying. Why can't I die? People organize big sales in a nut house better than I've organized this death. It's all very discouraging.
bad dream? I don't know. Which is the dream? Can you have a dream within a dream? Hey, you look different. Yeah, you too. I do? Yeah, you're a... What is it? My skin? Am I turning pink? Yeah, now that you mention it. That's it, then. I've only got seconds left. Death must be standing right here by my bed now. I can feel the burn from the radiation. I burn real easy. Yeah, well, you you see know, I get a burn uh, on overcast days. Even if somebody says beach house, even if I'm standing too yeah, close well, to the um, You know, I can get a burn from a nightlight. I burn awfully easy. Yes, well, can I you see to... anything back uh, here? Uh, man, I'm, I'm getting... trying real hard, but I can't relate to your problem there. I just can't hack it. Now, about this suit, man. What suit? This suit. This suit here. This suit here that I bought to go looking for work in. This suit here that sneaks out every night when I'm sleeping and always gets mugged. That suit is a bargain for four hundred dollars. Ninety-six. That's for openers, man. That's for starts. And then you have this interest compounded and recompounded and payments spread over umpty nine months. Then all them carrying charges and mailing charges, and he don't know the difference of charge and charges, and charges just for breathers. And I have never cheated a man in my life. You're the worst kind of cheat. You cheat the poor. It makes you super crook. Now, why don't you come off it, Daddy? Will you be quiet? Will you keep your voice down? There's a dead man in the house. <gasps> Boy, my head. Oh, man, you're too much. It's so hot. You're too much. I'm burning up. I'm beginning to think dying's not really worth the trouble. I just feel rotten. Yeah. Is that better? Oh, yeah. That's cool. Oh. Oh, your hand. It's like ice. You just keep it right there, phantom looter. Man, you give me more trouble than Job, and you give me the same sassy lip. Think you better keep an eye on the Schwarzer, Louie. He's starting to act kind of funny. You know, for somebody who doesn't exist, you say some very peculiar things. Yeah, man, I think it's time we get down to cases. Now, you're going to admit you're a crook and let me have my refund. Sorry, no refunds to illusions. That's always been the policy of the store, and I can't make any exceptions now. If you do it for one, you have to do it for all. Wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going. Oh, stay. Come on, sit down, stay. But I'm an illusion. Yeah, I know, but I don't want to die alone. See? The trash he hangs out with. The dregs. <laughs> always did, ever since he was 12. It didn't matter where he went or what he was doing. It could be in church. Oh, he'd find the bad ones. <laughs> you know that Harvey, that invisible rabbit, the one that followed that fellow around everywhere? Well, instead of a rabbit, my Eddie had like a pool room, an invisible pool room that sat over him like a box. And everywhere that Eddie walked, it walked. <laughs> oh, I tried. God knows I tried. I said, Eddie, trust nobody but your mother because people are rotten and they'll take advantage and I'm the only one who loves you. <laughs> A lot of good it did. See the thanks I get for warning him? He's dying. Here I am, dying. And a spade hallucination who wants a refund on his suit is keeping my head cool with his hand. I don't know. Every now and then I get the feeling there's something awfully, awfully funny going on around here. There ain't nothing funny going on around here, man. I wish I really could have done something with my life. I mean, something important. I had an idea once. I wanted to adapt Shakespeare's plays for dogs. Well, it would have taken me years. It's a labor of love. I took a stab at Julius Caesar. But I only got as far as the assassination scene, where this great big spotted Dalmatian whips his toga around himself and he snarls, et tu, Bob, son of battle. I don't believe you, man. I just don't believe you. Oh, it would have taken me years. Well, time is slipping away, man, so let's get down to it. It? What? This suit. Look, I have never seen that suit before. I have never seen you before. I am not seeing you now. I'm not seeing you now. Wait a minute, what's going on here? My head's all wet. I... Blood. 
My God, that's blood. Well, it's you. Your hand's bleeding. There's a hole in your hand. There's a hole in the other one. Watch. Starting to remember where you saw me before? Man, I got no trouble remembering you. Yeah, you've seen me before. You sold me this suit a million times and cheated me every time you sold it. You helped to put rats in my baby's playpen. You stripped me down naked and helped me go hungry. You set my wife out to walk in the streets for a hundred years just to make enough money to buy me this suit, this horrible suit. You starting to remember? You? I met you the first time when you were baptized. Then when you had your first communion. We haven't had a nice word since then. I'm every man living down in the ghetto. I'm every man you ever sold a suit to. I'm every man you ever cheated. Now, who am I, Chief? Who am I? You're... You're the Lord. Well, I'm... I'm surprised you're even speaking to me. Yeah. You sure been rotten. No, I don't mean that. I mean, I thought you'd be kind of uppity. And I mean you were rotten. What are you talking about? I gave it to your office. Last month, I gave to everything. Those charities I... and causes you put your name to, they're just smoke screens for your conscience. I hate to break it to you this way, but you've been a creep the best part of your life. Why else do you think you took those sleeping pills? Because I was lonely. Because nobody loved me. What are you talking about? I loved you. Until you were grown, Eddie, I adored you. Why did you stop when I was grown? Because that's when you started talking back. My mother. Your cop out. Sure, she made you feel insecure and afraid to live, afraid to love. Afraid that nobody could love you. But she's just a painting now, Eddie, an illusion. It's just you and me now. That's the reality. The reality is I'm dying. The reality is you're dead. Now take a look at what's happening now, Eddie. At what's really, really happening. Don't make me look. Please, I don't want to look. It's awful. Don't, don't make me look. Heart stopped. Oh, my God. Up to now, it was just, well, I. I didn't think it was real. Oh, it's real. And I am the Lord. For real? Amen. Uh-oh. That clinches it there, that amen. Hey, I notice my mother isn't here. Is this heaven? you do that? I don't know. I just felt like it. You know, you're a very strange god. Well, thank me for small favors. Well, what happens now? I mean, is this it? The whole hereafter? You playing the trumpet and me here looking dumb? Forever and ever and all eternity? Where am I? You're in a kind of passageway. To where? Where? That's up to you. Don't give me that. Suppose I said Disneyland. Oh. Yeah. I know where that door goes to. Didn't you just tell me now I was rotten? That door goes to hell, huh? 
goes right straight to hell. Hey, listen. Who did I ever kill? Who did I ever rape? I, what did I ever do that was so damn bad? Sold me this suit. That suit's a sin? A mortal sin? All right. All right, I held a knife to the throats of my customers and I made them buy that suit. I made them take 36 months to pay. It's my fault that they couldn't find credit anyplace else or they had to come to me. Are you crazy, man? That's business. For business, you sending me to hell? Listen, man, I don't send nobody no place. They goes where they wants to go. You've been in hell the best part of your life because you chose to be there. Don't you understand? You are in hell, as it were. But you don't have to stay there, unless you want to. You're not the Lord. You're Jude the Obscure. You're talking interlocking puzzles. Listen, I... baby, hell is where you are. Hell is being alone and all turn in on yourself. If that's the way you want to leave it when you walk through that door, well, then, baby, that's it. That's hell. Walking round and round, hugging yourself forever and ever. What are you drawing there? Oh, this is a holy picture. A holy... Good grief. Well, nobody's perfect. Listen, where does that door go to? There. Huh? That's you. That's an elephant, dummy. It's a white one, and it's you. But I dig you anyhow, you creep. With all your guilt, I dig you. <laughs> what in blazes is going on here, will you tell me? Now, where does that door go? I mean, really. Really, Eddie, that door goes to wherever you want it to go. Oh, just like that? Like that. Now, now, come on, come on. I'm a businessman. Now, what's the catch here? What's the fine print? What fine print? Well, that's just too easy. How come you're making such a project of it? How come you can't face your guilt? What guilt? There now, you see what I mean? What guilt? I treated this particular problem, namely, the deadening of the moral sense in my stunning tragedy, Macbeth. And then in 1610, I wrote, my resignation will turn it in. God can't resign. You're not making sense. Who needs a God who, who just doesn't make sense? I'll give you sense. Open up your ears. Listen, now you leave my boy alone. Now I'm coming out there. Oh, you better talk fast. If a man commits murder every day of the week, every week of his life, why, well, Chief, sure enough, there'll come a day when he won't even think it's murder. No, sir, he won't even think it's wrong. I'm stuck. If a man like that comes through that door, why, he can't find heaven, he can't lose hell. Eddie, help your mother. He won't know the difference between heaven and hell, not even if heaven was wearing pink booties. Eddie, help me. That's where you are right now, baby. You want to stay in hell, because you dig it. No, no. Man, you don't even know it's hell. Man, you won't even face your guilt. Man, that's why you don't even know that's why you killed yourself. Because you're already dead. All right. All right, I'm guilty. Are you satisfied? Eddie, help your mother. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Of what? Of whatever. Man, what do you take me for? I am the Lord, not a kangaroo court. And I ain't accepting no confessions where you signs your name and then I just got to fill in the blanks. Now face your guilt, man. Open up! Open up! And let my love come in. Oh, why can't you do that, son? I can't. You mean you won't? I can't. You won't? You bug me, God. Do you know that you bug me? You're scared. You're scared to death to open up because you're scared of anybody knowing you. Yes, that's right. Oh, well, cool it, man. I didn't stop loving you when you started talking back. I love you anyway, no matter what you've done. I love you anyway. Not if you knew me. I'm God, baby, and I can do anything. Not if you knew me, you couldn't love me. I know you. 
No, you don't. If you really knew the way I am, I swear you'd... You'd vomit. Oh, I'll take a chance. Why can't you? No guts, no glory, baby. Now stop playing it safe and take a chance on my love. Take a jump in the dark and open up to me. How could you love me if I were filth? I don't know. I'm funny that way. Oh, God. The things I've done. Hallelujah. you and me go on out there together. Uh, wait a minute. Maybe first uh, I'd better tell you all the things I've done. Well, not just now. I mean, you've got one or two points to settle, and I'd better explain them. I knew it. The fine print. <laughs> Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church. <laughs>